What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with Main Assembly, and it's been a while since we've played Main Assembly, but I really wanted to get back into it, mainly because it's got a lot of really cool stuff you can do with the sensors and automation and logic, and I really haven't done much automation in this game at all. The last episode, which was a couple months ago, we made an automatic space homing missile, which was super, super cool, and uh, now I've built a formula car, because I'm actually, surprisingly enough, a big fan of F1 racing, and I wanted to make my own formula car, and I really wanted one for such a long time in main assembly, and the devs finally added these compact suspension a while ago, which kind of looks like formula suspension, and so I scaled a car to that, and I, you know what, I think it looks pretty good. For those of you guys who don't know main assembly, it's a great building game, really quite fantastic, you can build all sorts of vehicles, planes, cars, boats, whatever you want, really. Um, and you build with freeform crafting, so you can see everything is built from these lines and these vertices, and if we want to change something, we can just click and drag, and you know, that would change the wing. Now, the other cool thing about main assembly is there's actual aerodynamics that gets calculated on surfaces, and of course you can adjust that. So, in this particular build, we're using a material called aeroplastic on these wing surfaces, and that material actually has an increased aerodynamic effect. So the wings actually matter on this car. The faster we go, the more downforce they'll generate. This back wing here generates some downforce, the front one as well, and the whole car body shape does as well, but the aerodynamic resistance of the shapes is a little bit less than this aeroplastic. So you can do some really, really cool stuff. But I decided to build this car. It's pretty sweet. We're just going to drive around. And the other nice thing that's really cool about main assembly is uh, unlike Scrap Mechanic, we have full controller support. So I'm actually using an Xbox controller right now to drive this car. And it's a lot, lot nicer to do that. Now you can, of course, customize your inputs, your controls, and all that. But I'm completely playing this with a joystick. And I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy racing games with a joystick. Now we do have this kind of wonky follow camera. I was hoping to make it closer to the car. Um, I don't know how to make the follow cam closer to the car, but of course we can uh, just follow the car around here It's kind of nice. We can also turn off the follow cam and the coolest thing I, I put a behind the seat camera on this car So built into the intake there's a behind the seat camera and uh, it lets us do some first person stuff Which is a little bit jittery, but it's still pretty freaking awesome So I really really like this game. I really wanted to get back into it, but of course this isn't the whole episode This is a formula car. It's beautiful. I really like it. It's got a handbrake um, you know, why not? It goes pretty quick. The engine sounds not bad. There's only really two engine sounds in this game. Well, there's three. One's an electric engine. Uh, one is a gas engine that sounds like this. And the other one is a gas engine that sounds like a truck. So I, I was kind of hoping for having an F1 type car engine sound. But, you know, this one has to do... And it is a little bit bouncy. We still have a little bit of that terrain bounce, uh, just like in Scrap Mechanic. But, of course, what I really wanted to do was build an automatic race car. So I built this race car frame. It's beautiful. Uh, again, for those who haven't seen Main Assembly, the programming is all done here. So it's actually really, really easy if we look at it. So this little chunk here, we'll just move it out of the way. This is a speedometer. Um, so we take the speed, which is calculated from a speed sensor that's built into the chassis. And we basically multiply it by 3.6. And then we output it to the screen as our kilometers an hour speed. I, I'm Canadian, so, I, you know, we use real units here. And uh, 3.6 times meters per second is equal to kilometers an hour. Then, of course, we've got this here. This is our camera circuit. Uh, really simple. We just activate the camera. I can, again, we'll move this over here. So we just activate the camera when you press C or the Y button on your controller. It's really cool that you can do this and have dual inputs and stuff. You could use an OR gate as well, so there is all that available. But this is why I really wanted to get back into main assembly. It's The programming is it, it's quite fun. Uh, and then we've got, of course, our space or A button handbrake, our D and A to steer, and our W, S for power. So that's how your basic car function works. And when you create a car in main assembly, it sort of automatically lays out some stuff for you. You can add custom stuff, of course, like the camera, stuff like that. Um, actually, you can see this is, I really like this camera placement. This looks so cool. Look at that. There's our, there's our sneaky little camera just hidden in there. That actually took so long to get it to place properly. Um, but I think it looks really good. So anyway, we're going to run a lap here. So what I wanted to do in this episode, I've been sort of just droning on and on, but my original thought was to make a car that drives the race course on its own. And the reason why is I want to set lap records. And the cool thing is with this game is there's a smart sensor, and you can actually program the smart sensor to, uh, oh, that was a bad turn, to look at the closest checkpoint. And so I thought, okay, well, if we have a car like this, and this car drives pretty decently, like I can, you know, I can drive it pretty decently as a person, and if we program our car to look at the next checkpoint in a line, we should be able to theoretically have it drive around the whole course, right? We just have to have our car steer towards the checkpoint. But 
The problem with that is the checkpoints, as you've noticed, as we're driving around this course, they're kind of spread apart. So they're not all like every corner. For example, this one, it's around that corner. And as a human, we know, okay, I drive straight along the track and I don't want to go off the track, but an AI wouldn't necessarily see that. It would just kind of drive straight towards the next checkpoint, turn in on it and, you know, boom, done. So I actually made a, a bunch of different versions of this car. I absolutely love it. Um, so this is, of course, the prototype. Uh, how we know it's a prototype, it's it's made of carbon fiber. Uh, as you can see, carbon fiber. It's a it's a prototype because it's because it's carbon fiber. And this one has a little bit uh, a little bit more programming involved. So this was my first attempt at doing this, and we kind of stepped through it. But this car is is really quite cool. So same car, same formula setup. Uh, it's got the same driving characteristics, four wheel drive, all that. However, it will automatically steer towards the checkpoints. Now I did talk to the devs about this because I said, hey, it would be super cool if we had a few more checkpoints on the track, because then I could make a car that automatically goes checkpoint to checkpoint to checkpoint. And the dev replied to me, said, Con, you know we have a map maker, and you can just make your own racetrack on the map maker and then put as many checkpoints as you want. And I was like, yes, I'm an idiot, and I forgot about that. So I am going to, at some point in time, make my own track with some custom checkpoints laid out. I still think it would be cool if, if they updated theirs. But anyway, let's take a look. So this car... It has some logic in it. I'll show you guys how that works in a sec. But basically, when we start driving, on the left, you'll see we have these sort of things. So we've got speed, we've got checkpoint exists, manual steering, and throttle. So the throttle is pretty simple. When I hit the triggers on my controller, you know, that goes negative one to positive one. One is full forward, negative one is full reverse. And manual steering, again, one to negative one. This is as I use my joystick left and right. I'm manually steering the car. But... I'm not going to manually steer the car. I'm going to automatically... So if you pay attention to that while we're driving, this will all make sense. So if I if I press the throttle, I'm not steering. I'm going to remind you, I'm not steering. This is all the AI steering. And you can see it's just trying to go straight towards the next checkpoint. So we're just going to bounce over these curbs. And as it gets that checkpoint, you see I'm still not steering. It, okay, well, okay. This See, this is the problem. You run it... Yeah, no, I... Yeah, we're... Okay, well, maybe we should have had an off-road car... Once again, I'm still not steering. I'm going to try and steer now to maybe get us out of this mess. Um, see if we can do that. There we go. I steered. And now look. So this is the problem, right? Without enough checkpoints, you can see it's just trying to snipe every possible corner and and just go. Yeah, just, just straight at it. That's okay. Look, we can even be the wrong way. Look at this. It'll just turn. It'll eventually, eventually perfect. There we go. Full speed. This one's actually a pretty good checkpoint except for that curb. It's okay. It made it though. We're perfect. Uh, we'll just turn out of there. So I can kind of, it's kind of cool. It's its like almost having a steering assist with this. This would be the kind of car you'd let your, you know, younger sibling play with. Like you got a, like a younger brother or younger sister who's like, hey, I want to play the game too. This kind of gives them a steering assist. It helps force them towards each next checkpoint. So I can fight it here. I'm, I'm fighting it to keep it straight. But it naturally is trying to turn me. And now because we have enough speed, it's just doing this turn all on its own. And there you go. Boom. Uh, okay, we're, we're stuck on the wall. Can you, can you steer towards the finish? There we go. Perfect. So a really cool system, and I'll show you guys how that works. It's actually really, really easy. So inside the car, we've got this smart sense. Oh god, this is a mess. Uh, right up here in the front. It's underneath the front nose piece. Actually, we can just delete this. Oh, oh, what did I just delete? Oh no, I pressed delete on something. There we go. Perfect. So there, inside this front chassis nose piece here, you can see we've got the smart sensor, and that smart sensor we can then use in our programming to do literally whatever we want. Um, but in this case, we've got some basic stuff. So WS power, this is the same normal circuit. We'll leave that alone. Uh, that's a distance. This is all the same up here. The camera, the brake, and this is again your speedometer. So this is all the same stuff. Actually, we can put that back up here. The only thing on this car that changes is this circuit here, and this is the steering circuit. So within the smart sensor, we have a few options. First of all, we're telling the smart sensor to go to the next checkpoint. So that's what it's looking at is checkpoint. We could tell it to go to the bot the dummy, the ball, the box, parking zone, danger, literally whatever we want. I want to try, and, and this is something crazy, also the drone, but I want to try at some point beating an entire level, like one of the levels the devs have designed, with only a smart sensor vehicle. I think it's possible if you pick the right level, because you can have a vehicle that's fully automated and can look for like the next objective with checkpoints or the pickup point where it has to pick up an object like they literally have everything the parking point is the end of the level boxes balls dummies you name it so i feel like we could make a vehicle that 100 automatically does a level i'm not sure yet i haven't 
actually looked at the levels, like I've, I've played through the levels, but I'd have to look at which level specifically would be the best to do that. But I think it might be possible with a series of smart sensors, and they also have proximity sensors and stuff so you can detect when your bot hits an object, stuff like that. But anyway, for this, we're using a single smart sensor set to checkpoint. Um, I'm pretty sure we can only have one smart sensor track one object, and if you wanted to track two objects with the same vehicle, you'd need a second smart sensor. I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure. And we're using that smart sensor basically to give us the bearing to each individual checkpoint. So whenever a checkpoint exists, this sort of valid target thing turns on. This is from a smart sensor, and that's what, you know, this checkpoint exists debug tells us. So whenever the smart sensor sees a checkpoint, which means the race has started, this becomes a 1. Normally it's a 0, it becomes a 1, and then it gets multiplied by the bearing, which is basically, you can see here, the range to the object. So negative 1 is 180 degrees to the left, and positive 1 is 180 degrees to the right. That'll tell us which way we have to steer in order to get to the center of the checkpoint. And of course, we're only doing that if we have a valid target. And then we just multiply these by a constant, which I go as number two. Uh, this is sort of like a steering angle enhancer, I'll, we'll call it that. Uh, I found with when I had this as a one-to-one, -one, it wasn't enough steering angle. Multiply it by a two, it means your steering angle just, you know, adjusts a little bit more. And then we put this to our front wheels. And of course, we're adding it to the D and A symbol. So if you manually steer, you're actually adding it to the automatic steering and you could fight the automatic steering. Basically the the add just sort of works like an OR gate. And that's how this whole system works. This is kind of important because the other systems, they get a little bit more advanced. So that's what this car is. It's a prototype. Uh, it doesn't drive on its own. Obviously it only steers on its own, but it's still a really cool car. And I'm definitely going to create my own course with checkpoints at some point. I totally forgot that the game had a map maker until I contacted the devs and they were like, yeah, con, you should just make your own map. So I am going to make a map with some nice tight checkpoints and then make some AI racers and really try and like tune them. I want to make an AI that's so fast when it races around the course that a player just can't keep up. And so I got to make a good course for it, obviously, with enough checkpoints that I can actually, you know, steer it. But then I want to try and race it myself and uh, see right now, obviously, this thing just runs into walls and I'm way faster. But luckily for me, we built some other cool stuff. So after that idea completely flopped and failed and burned, um, while I was waiting for the devs reply, I decided to build my own... <laughs> my own cars and since I realized I couldn't actually have the cars uh you know do the track on their own I figured the next best thing is to have the cars chase me around the track because then at least I could set some lines together so this is my first AI car um and if we spawn this I'm not sure if we can can this one this one I think we can yeah we can turn it on so if we press number one this gives us a manual control override as you can see in the bottom left so target exists one this one's actually uh, uh this is actually really cool this car is designed to follow the bot um, so we can actually get out of the seat here. And it's designed, I think, to stay within two meters of the bot. You can see it's turning towards us as we look at it. And if I go away from it, it's just, come here, car. So it's going to constantly try and keep itself within, like, five meters of us. And as we go further away, it's going to accelerate faster. And then when it gets closer, it's going to slow down and then eventually break when it's within our... With, I love it. It's so good. So, it, you know, it could, we could we could just keep going around the whole... Come here. I can go faster. Come on. But again, it's, it's kind of like the previous car... Uh, it just sort of goes straight at us, and it's a little bit stupid. So it doesn't, you know, yeah, it, yeah, no, yeah. Are you gonna, are you high centered? Come here. Perfect. You, you got a little, you got a little dinged up there, bud. It also, uh, doesn't have reverse. So, um, if you jam it into a wall, uh, it's just stupid and it gets stuck there. I didn't put any proximity sensors on it. It, uh, I was talking to the devs too. There's no track sensor, which I thought would be cool. So we can't actually tell where the track is. The only thing we could do is use proximity sensors and sort of sense the outer wall. Um, but as you can see, this thing is, it's just, it's just high center now. It's just struggling. So of course, being a fan of uh, F1, my ultimate goal was to have ideally 20 cars race around the entire course because I thought, you know, it would be, oh, I keep forgetting, every time I get out of that car, it tries to get to me. Uh, it's really, it's really quite stupid. But yeah, I really wanted to have like 20 cars racing around the course and all just following the next checkpoint. And you could easily do that because you could line them up all on the grid. And until the race actually counts down and goes 3, 2, 1, start, the checkpoint itself never appears. And so I do have to definitely figure out how that works and make a custom race course because then we could line up all the cars and it would be really really awesome to watch them all race around the track and that was the ultimate goal but anyway we'll take a look at this one ah uh, this became a mess yeah actually you know what we're gonna look at the other one first so i built another car because of course why not i got nothing better to do but build formula cars uh they're all the same i will point that out they all are the exact same they all have a smart sensor in the front of them the only difference is they have different programming with them so this one is kind of the same as the last one 
except instead of following the robot, which is us here, uh, you can see it can't... Where, what are you doing? What, you have no target right now. Like, you shouldn't have a target. But anyway, instead of following us, it follows the closest other bot. So all the vehicles and stuff you build in main assembly are considered bots. And it's going to follow the closest bot. And again, the same as the previous car, it's going to try and stay within 5 meters of the bot. So you can see, if I get this one going, as I drive away in the car, this one follows that car. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I could have a lineup of these guys, the red guys, all following me as a vehicle, right? And as I drive, they could all follow me in a big line, and it would be great. Um, but unfortunately, there's a problem with that, which is, if I have a red car try to follow another red car, because they're both the closest bot to each other, they don't really care. They just sort of drive into each other. Like, they basically just, they park one in front of the other, and they stop, and they wait there. So, of course, you guys can probably figure out where this is going now. And I thought, well, the next best thing, let's have three cars. So we're going to line them up and then we're going to do it. And then I'll look at how some of this programming works because obviously the red and the blue cars are a little bit more advanced. But the red car is going to search for the nearest bot. So we're going to park it at the back. And then in front of the red car, we're going to very carefully, if I can do this, park the blue car. Let's load all the manual saves. All right, perfect. It's got to be really close to it. And then we got to zoom in and get out of the seat so this car doesn't try and follow us. And then we got to very carefully spawn the green car in front of the blue car. If I'm not... Oh, it's going to crush its front wing. Okay, hold on. Let me just... A little bit forward. There we go. All right, perfect. So now we're going to turn off follow cam because it's going to keep trying to rotate us back forward. And so the red car is going to try and follow the closest bot, which is the blue car. And the blue car is going to try and follow us, the little robot guy. So when I start driving forward, the blue car follows us. And then the red car should follow the blue car. And just like that, we've got a train of AI. Who needs friends when you've got computer programs that oh, I, I really need some friends to race with? But anyway, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Of course, I do want the... You see, if I take the corner wide, you can trick them out. Um, come up. You gonna get back on? Okay. Come on, blue guy. Red guy. Come on, red. This is a tough course to keep them aligned with. I can't go too fast because uh, obviously if I go too fast, they, they oversteer. And this is with, remember, this is with two times steering. So they're double compensating for however far away I am on an angle. You can see how if it was one time steering, they'd be taking even wider turns, um, which is crazy. We're just trying to, we're just trying to get everybody around the corner. Oh God, no. Why would you do that, man? Why would you hit? Oh, now he's, oh, now you, oh, you guys are idiots. You're such idiots. You're so stupid. Oh, no. Oh, okay. We got to set them up again. All right. We got the boys lined up again. Let's do it. Like I said, these guys are cool. I, I named them AI1 and AI2. I'm obviously going to build other ones. These are basically glorified, um, I mean, I guess glorified player trackers, if you really want to think of it. One's tracking the player, one's tracking the bot. They're pretty good, despite, you know, what they're doing. I mean, obviously, they don't sort of correct for anything. They just do instant... Oh, God. You guys are idiots. You guys are- you, you're such an idiot. You're such a moron. You guys are both so stupid. Okay, hold on. It's fine. We can fix this. You guys are dumb. Oh my god. Red. See, the red one's trying to track the closest bot, which was the blue bot there. But it's okay now. They'll- they'll solve it. Come on. But anyway, they're not bad. They're pretty good. I do definitely, like I said, I want to make a race course with checkpoints, and then I'm going to make these things super fast. Those guys are actually set to, uh, they have only a 75% throttle cap, but I'm obviously not even going full throttle. If I, uh, if I try and go full throttle and race this course, they will, they will not keep up. They will smash into probably the first or second wall, and, uh, and that'll be that. So they aren't exactly the smartest, um, oh my god, you, really? Maybe I should probably try and, like, straight down the course instead of, look, we gotta take the corners nice and wide. The, uh, we lost the red guy into the wall. He can't get off that wall either. You're, you're literally... You're literally so... You Come on, Red. Come on, man. I believe in you, dude. Come on. Just... Just... Just off the wall. What if I go a little bit further so you have more throttle? Come on. Full... No, he's just... He's just actually stuck. Alright, let's bring the blue one back around. We gotta finish one lap here, guys. This is embarrassing. We can't even get one lap done. Come on. There you go. Look, you're off that. Okay, well, you're... Okay, is this gonna... Oh my god. Oh, yeah, no. 
All right, so I guess before we finish that lab, I might as well show you guys how these work. They're they're similar, but they're slightly different. Uh, the blue one has a little bit of extra stuff. I actually built the red one first, and then I went into the blue one. So the, the red one, it does some math to actually calculate the WS power. And I tried to lay this out as best I could. So we still have our WS capability when we get in it. We can still drive it like a car. Um, same with our spacebar control and our steering control A and D. And all of these, you can see, they just add into the value. So like, we're adding our spacebar input to the brake. We're adding our power to this. So if you press the controls, it'll work with the, the value that's being sent. In main assembly, we're doing everything with number logic. So this is basically a plus one, minus one situation. So the input is plus one or minus one. And we're adding it to the existing input, which comes out as a... a plus one minus one which comes from this split so we'll take a look at that in a sec uh steering pretty much the same as it was before valid target bearing multiplied by the steering value of two we've got that constant and that of course we add it makes the front wheel steer uh that's the same as before we've also got the valid target now going into the brake so our brake will apply uh and we don't have our valid target going into our throttle which is kind of weird. We probably should have done that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So the valid target goes in the brake. So the brake won't work if we don't have a valid target. Oh, that's why it was drifting forward. See, that's why the car was rolling. Because the brake only works if you have a valid target. Uh, but the throttle works regardless. So it applied the throttle and didn't have any brake to apply against it. But anyway, to do this, we're using a really cool block. This is split block. So this is one of the blocks. Main assembly, if you look, we've got like the, the number of math blocks main assembly has is actually kind of insane. Like they have... I'm not even joking, guys. Literally everything you could possibly imagine. So this is really why I want to get back into doing some crazy, like, main assembly log. Look, they got built-in memory blocks, PID sequences, everything. You you name it, they've got it. Um, so I really want to get into building more automated things in main assembly because I feel like that's where this game really shines is the level of automation you can do without any sort of modding is just unbelievable. And, of course, the complicated creations you can make, like aerodynamics and stuff like that, um, you know, it makes it really a lot cooler. But... The distance is really simple. So we're using our smart sensor again. This one is the red car. So it is tracking uh, the bot, which is the blue car, the closest bot to it. Could be anything. Could be a plane, whatever. Any other bot you have on the map. We're the drone. Our little robot is the drone. And the bot is a vehicle. It's kind of confusing, but it makes sense. And so we're basically saying our distance divided by 15 multiplied by the split value is added to our power. And this is sort of like a, it's a power diminisher this is what gives you sort of that ramping power so as we get closer to the vehicle it gives us less power um so the constant of five meters it's the first thing first we compare our current distance to a constant of five meters and that's to say if we're within five meters do nothing and that's what this split block does so the split block is kind of weird but you can see if input a is positive it's sent to output a if input a is negative it's sent to output b but it's made positive first so no matter what we're going to have a one output from the split block and so what's happening here is when we're within five meters, it outputs to the brake. And when we're outside of five meters, it multiplies it by the power. And it multiplies the power by 15 divided by our distance. So we're with, when we're within 15 meters, we're not going to be going full 100% power. And anytime we're over 15 meters, the value will be greater than one, but the power only accepts a maximum input of one. So it doesn't matter, even if your power is like 15 or 20 or 30 or whatever. So we're going basically from a range. And as we get closer to zero meters, that's going to slow down. And when we get within five meters, it applies the brake. So it's a really... It's kind of a simple circuit. It took a little bit to figure out what these two constants should be. Um, just because if the 5 is too short, then it'll ram into the car, which still happens sometimes at full speed. And of course, if it's too long, then the cars don't stay close enough together going around the corners, which kind of happened. And same with the 15, it's the ramp up time. But the whole circuit uh, works pretty simply. And of course, it lets us have this epic car, which follows literally anything around. So uh, let's spawn this in. And just to show it, I'm going to spawn in an old car. I built a while ago and this is a, a concept car with an active wing so this car here same deal uh you know basic car but the wing is active so as we turn that back wing you know folds and then goes flat and of course aerodynamics is a real thing uh, this is a much larger scaled car obviously than that formula car but you can see it doesn't matter because we're also a bot um it'll just follow us around of course i just deked it out so now i oh no it still got out of there come here no you're you're yeah you're totally you're totally screwed. All right, and finally, we get to the blue car. Now, the blue car is actually pretty much the same as the red car, although it doesn't look the same at all. The only difference is actually this one little circuit in here, this one toggle override. With the red car, it tracks the closest other bot, 
And so that was actually kind of easy because you can manually drive the red car around as long as there's no other bots on the field. Because if there's no other bots on the field, it doesn't have anything to track. So it just kind of sits there and lets you use all the manual controls. But with the blue car, because it's trying to track the player, it's tracking the drone, which is the little player robot, uh, it needed this override. And basically the override takes a look at the valid target. And if the valid target subtracts the override value, then it sets it to a zero. So it's looking for a valid target, which it's always going to have because the player is always on the map, no matter what. So it always has a valid target, which means this is always a one. And if we turn on this one override, it shuts that off. And so if we spot it, you can see, look, the wheels are already tracking me. They're trying to get to me as a robot. But if I press one, it turns on that manual control in the bottom left. And you can see target exists becomes zero. So target exists is one. It's trying to find me. Target exists becomes zero. And of course, if target exists is one and I get out of the car, you know, it's going to it's going to try to get towards me. Even if I go up super, super high, uh, it doesn't care. It's going to steal steer towards where I would be on the ground. So really, really cool stuff. I love making automated stuff. The automated stuff is so fun to me. Like it took so long to make this car. The thing with main assembly, which is beautiful, but terrible at the same time is you have really a lot of control over the crafting. You can see with this car, there's a lot of curved surfaces and uh, it all makes a difference. You can affect exactly where your wheels are positioned, how high they are off the ground. You can even affect the camber of the wheels. These wheels have camber. The red guy just spun out. Red dude, come on, dude. Come on, stick with the freaking group, dude. But anyway, you can adjust everything in main assembly, and that's great, and I love it, but it also makes it super difficult um, to make a really good vehicle. You gotta, like, really tune everything and really think about it. This red car is, oh my god, it's like the worst, dude. Just stick with the group, man. But anyway, I love it, but it took a long time, so it just spun out. It, Oh, the blue guy just rear Oh, no. Guys, come on. Guys. Well, the blue guy just spun out. Red guy's just... <laughs> what is he doing? He's... He just drifting it. What are you guys doing? Are you guys like, are you, are you okay? Oh my God. Bro. Okay. Okay. Let's hold on. <laughs> Can everybody just chill? No chill. Zero chill. These vehicles have no chill. Third time's the charm, I guess. But anyway, like I was saying, main assembly, a wonderful game. Let me know, of course, what you guys think in the comments down below. There's another few builds I'd really like to try in main assembly. And like I said, the next thing I want to do with this car is actually build a proper course for it um, that has a lot of checkpoints and then make a version like that that has its own throttle control and tries to race through the corners because it's not just as simple as point towards the checkpoints. These ones are super simple. They're just designed to point, you know, at the next target and go towards it. But when it comes to actually racing a car, you need it to slow down in the corners and not do like this stuff. Like, what do you, what do you, you just freaking took him out? Look, so the red guy takes out the blue guy. Right, and now is following the blue guy and just taunting him. Look, I'm gonna get... Come here, come towards me, bro. Come on. Come on. No, no, stop. You stupid, you stupid car. Come here. Can we flip him back? Come on, flip. No, I blew a tire on red. Okay, well, red's missing a tire. Can we just... And blue's... Okay, this is, this is an epic, epic fail. This is... You guys are... I'm trying to just demonstrate something, and you guys just suck. Since these guys won't cooperate on the long course, we're going to try the short course. But definitely, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make a checkpoint race that's actually properly set up for AI with lots of checkpoints along it. So there's lots of stuff you can use as references to make sure your AI will follow the whole circuit. I was a little bummed out when I noticed the checkpoints on this one. I honestly was hoping to make a complete formula car that would follow these races on their own. And uh, of course, I could race them against each other rather than having them follow each other. But I really like the look of this vehicle and how it came out. And then on top of it, you have to spend some time programming it and tuning it. And oh my God, you know what? We're just leaving the red guy. I don't even care, bro. You had your chance. You keep screwing it up. You took it too wide. I don't even care. You're just you're just stuck behind. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me other ideas for main assembly. Guys, the tracker is pretty sweet. There's like, I, you know, I, I haven't even talked about it. There's altitude sensors. There's velocity sensors. There's all sorts of detection systems in main assembly that would let us do really cool stuff. For example, like autopilot systems for planes, which I haven't even gotten into. But you can make a really consistent plane in main assembly that flies with aerodynamics. And then, of course, we could put an entire autopilot programmed system into it. All sorts of really cool stuff. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you hit those buttons. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time. Look, this blue one's great. The blue one's, like, doing real well. It's just the red one that sucks. They're the exact same, though. Oh, well. This thing's perfect.